So on the screen here, you can see that we're in manual exposure. You can see we're ISO 1250. We have auto white balance set, F5 and 1 60th of a second. We've got a little battery sensor here, which tells us both the battery of the camera and the battery power of the remote itself. So let's go ahead and change some of these settings. If I click the selection button on the bottom here, you'll see that the ISO is starting to flash. I can roll this up and down and you'll see that the exposure is changing on the back of the camera. So let's select which one we want, ISO 1250, just by clicking it. Now, if we wanted to do some different settings, we'll click again on the bottom there, and then we can basically cycle through the different settings. This is focus mode setting, and we have three different focus speeds and a progressive focus mode. So this is saying focus 3P, and then we've got focus 1, focus 2, which has a progressive and uh, a single speed focus, and then go to uh, focus 3. So basically the difference between those is uh, focus 1, 2, and 3 in the F mode is just a set speed. So if you were to select F mode and you just went left or right, uh, it doesn't matter where in this positioning you go, it's the same speed focusing in either direction. Now, say we wanted to have it in P mode, we're in focus 3 P now, and I'll select that one. What this is, uh, basically makes use of the three different speeds available and does them across the range in either direction. So here we would have slow, medium, and fast. So that's what progressive means. You get three different speeds in each direction throughout the travel of the focus throw switch. So going back in here again, uh, focus. Here we can set the shutter speed. And here we can set the white balance. We can either have auto white balance or we can select Kelvin temperature. And here we have the aperture. So all the controls that you would really need and uh, right in the palm of your hand. It's pretty neat the way that, that works actually. All right, let's take a look at this thing in action. So here I have it linked up to the Canon 1D Mark IV. I've tried it on the 5D Mark III as well, and everything seems to work exactly the same. So check out Manfrotto's website to make sure that your camera is compatible. Now, uh, here we've got the Mark IV is lined up at a scene shooting some plants there uh, in a flower pot. Here we have all the various controls that we need. If I move this little D-pad around, you'll see the little square on the screen moving around as well. If I press the magnifying glass, we'll zoom in five times and 10 times to assist with focusing. Now, I'm on focus mode three progressive here, which means that I have uh, three different speeds in either direction. So if we just come and bring this into focus, let's see where we are. You can move this scene around as well to make sure you're right in focus back out to 100%. Now, uh, this is actually a bit overexposed now. Let me turn that down. Um, so that, that pretty much works just like it does on camera. This, this button here will turn on and off the live view. And we got photo and video mode as well. But um, anyone thinking you can use this as a regular remote is going to be disappointed because uh, let's just see now. Here's the shutter button. So I'm going to press this. And as you can see, that's a good second and a half, two second delay between pressing the button and actually taking the photo. So um, I don't really know why that is. It definitely doesn't work like a regular remote would do that's plugged inside there. And actually that's something else to point out because if the camera goes to sleep, I wonder if I can put this to sleep. Um, I'm not going to be able to show this actually for a few minutes to let that go. Uh, essentially, if the camera goes to sleep, none of these buttons wake it up. So if you have this thing up on, oh, taking a photo. Uh, if you have this thing up on some kind of a rig and the reason you're using the remote is because you don't want to touch the camera and then the camera goes to sleep, well, you would think that doing something here with the remote would wake it up, but unfortunately it doesn't. And that's a pretty big drawback really for the type of uses that I would see people using this for. 
So that's, yeah, definitely something to note. So you should be able to see the little focus dial there. And now I'm going to put this in the fastest focusing. Can you see that moving? And just to show you, uh, it's still going, but I mean, this is the scale that we're, we're talking about here. And yet here is the fastest that it can get this lens focusing using this remote. So you definitely can't really track anything with it. So of course the feature that a lot of people are gonna to wanna to use this for is remote focusing. Um, having a rig without a, a traditional follow focus on the side seems like a really nice idea. And I wanna to demonstrate to you uh, how the focusing works because hey, it's definitely worth knowing a little bit more about this. One thing that I've seen is that there is a huge difference in the speed and the manner at which focusing is achieved with different lenses. So if you're contemplating buying one of these, um, I really would recommend trying to play with one in a store with the lenses that you intend on using it with. So at the moment, uh, we're in focus on this, this plant right here. Now, if I throw this completely out of focus until the lens goes to its extremity, which I'm doing, there we go, it's just stopped just now. Now let's just go back into focus again. And we're in focus right there. Go the other way to the other extreme. Yeah, I'm not actually even gonna bother doing that. It's gonna take forever. So uh, this particular lens is extremely slow at focusing, but it does it quite smoothly. Now these designs for these lenses, they, they were never intended to have continuous focusing video shown on them. So it's a little bit jerky as it, as it moves through the focusing cycle, but this one actually isn't. So I don't know, like I said, it, every lens that I've tried has been a little bit different. This one's really smooth, but it's really slow. I put the 24 millimeter F 1.4 on there and it was really, really jerky and it made a terrible noise like eh, 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 eh all the way through, but it was much, much faster. You could go from one extreme to the other uh, in just about a second and a half compared to this one, which mm, seems to be 10 seconds or more. So if you're thinking about buying one of these, uh, I would recommend trying it out in the store with the lenses that you intend on trying it with, because I can't possibly comment on all of them. Um, what I've noticed though, the 40 millimeter F 2.8 pancake lens with the STM motor, uh, which is a new, motor design from Canon is extremely smooth. Um, and it's, it's sort of a middle speed on it. So you've really got to experiment with different lenses and try out the different speeds there.